got a very entertaining one for you this week. That's right. The icon, the legend, the tall. Diabetti is with us on the pod today. We talk about all things makeup. She gets a good old slap my name. Um, what we talk about sperm and reality TV, and you know what, Vegas. You know what? And Derek Barry's forehead. Goodbye. M. Oh. M. Mom. When your first choice is a big old bus, you turn around and boom, you end up with us. Our number is 213-536-9180. Our email is sloppysecondspot at gmail.com. Now on with the show. Ah! Hi, you sloppy, you stupid little f***ing, you not so f***ing, you darling f***ing. Welcome to Sloppy Second with Big Dipper and Meatball. Meatball. Yeah, that's Big Dipper. How are you doing? I hit the sleigh button on an energy drink. Have you ever had a Celsius, mama? Turn my f***y out. I love Celsius. They're it's, pretty good. I actually... don't like the fruit punch marshmallow one that just came out. They Not, do have too many flavors. They have questionable flavors. You know what? Uh, there's a Red Bull that I really like, which is green, and I think it's dragon fruit. The limited edition. I'm into you. And I like the uh, maroon passion fruit one or the yellow pineapple one. And now I don't want to go crazy about our... Um, like sound effects because we're not going to be the sound effects girl, but I do have one queued up for our guest. I think I know what it is. I'm sure you know what it is. Do you want to introduce our guest? Okay. From season 14 of RuPaul's Drag Race, she's tall, she's fierce, she'll eat a bug. It's Diabetti! Hello! I'm Crystal. Oh, there it is. Wait, was... what was it? I couldn't hear it. I love oh, Crystal. You... Yeah, because you don't have your... I love, I love Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> your awesome. sister. I was waiting for that. I knew that was going to happen. Well, we're going to open with it, and then we'll promise that we won't do it again. No, yeah, it's okay. I'll never I play it again. Crystal. <laughs> Did it happen again? Yo, you don't have your headphones on. Hold on, let me it's just put it up. the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, yes, right. baby. <laughs> How are you? Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, you guys, I'm really, really excited to be here. I, I love a podcast. I, I think, you know, like there's like live performances and there's touring and stuff, but I love sitting down and just shooting with people. It's amazing. Well, you, you have a great gorgeous. personality and you are gorgeous. Yeah. Well, you know, you've only been talking to me for about 20 minutes. So. Look how the lip I know. The just dark bounces edge, and then it and then bounces it goes... and it matches the jacket. Mm -hmm. She's serving. And she's corseted under there. Well, well, only because <laughs> I'm only corseted because it gives me that mentality. You know what I'm saying? To like, be like, yes, like I just need it th fixes my posture. I have terrible posture. I recently terrible. received um, very hot photos from a drag queen out of drag. Which drag queen? I, I know. I can't, I can't say. Okay. I know who. And, and I they're a pump denier. Okay. And <laughs> I I showed these photos because they were very hot physique. Photos, okay. Okay. and I showed these to my trainer, okay. and I was like, "Look at this person." I think I know who you're talking about. And uh, I was like, "Look Ooh. at this person," and I was like, "He." We were talking about their physique and how impressive. Mm -hmm. And then I said, um, "You know, they're a drag performer." And he was like, "What?" Mm -hmm. Because his understanding of drag is a lot of like younger queens who just wear like show a lot of natural body. Yes. And I was like, "This this particular performer uh -huh. is giving." Voluminous ruffle shoulders. It never show the only skin you're gonna see is hands neck up. Okay, and that's the only skin you see. But hands an can be tricky. Like hands <laughs> <laughs> hands can give it away. I'm right. telling you. That's why I wear gloves all the, the time, gloves. bitch. Yes. But I'm looking at your shoulder. Yeah, like, like you, you have tell the silhouette. such a good silhouette story. Oh, thank you. I think RuPaul would disagree, but thanks. Uh, uh, why? <laughs> uh, what did oh, she no. say to you? When there she there, there to was, you? oh my gosh, there was one runway. It was it was the one where I dressed up as like a GI Jane. Uh -huh. um, oh yeah, with the hat. Yeah, right? they Maybe went very in, carry on. in on my body. They were like, "What do you have against corsets?" That's what Michelle said. What do you have against corsets? And I was like, "Well, I just didn't think this particular looked called for, you know, called yeah. for a corset, you know." And then RuPaul's like, "Okay, well, we need more padding then if you're not going to do a corset." <laughs> so I'm so anti all of that though right now. Even it, though I am I sitting feel like here wearing a corset. That's the vibe right now. <laughs> it's like no corset, well, no pads, no yeah. body. Yeah. Also like. Whoever you're trying to portray, you know, like everybody comes in different shapes and sizes. Right. So yes. Yeah, what did I ask yeah. you about your brazier earlier? They said, "What's in there?" Oh uh, yeah. You uh, said natural. It's just stuff. It's like it's like a padded bra. It's got its own little. Oh yeah, and then it's just skin and flesh. Yeah. Baby. Brazier sounds so mature. Brazier. No, what's under yes. your shirt? Just body, <laughs> okay. baby. Uh, 
Is All natural, 100% is, lean beef. Just I there mean, it not is. Lean, <laughs> not lean. Wait, is is this term offensive? What bitch term? tits? I don't know. I guess if someone found the term bitch offensive, then... Well, then they should probably not be watching well, okay, and any sort of Drag Race related what, content. My answer would be what's under there, it? I would say bitch tits. Okay, so yeah, so there's offensive in that way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But if someone walked up to you maybe outside of a post office and said, hey, I like your bitch tits, it's a compliment. There you go. Outside of a post office. That happened to, <laughs> to the UPS. Did it? It sure did. Did you um, engage in that, though, in I any said sort of thanks. way? thanks. Were because they attractive? No. You had you had what I'm getting right now, which is the sweat under. I had the sweat under, and I was wearing one of those acid wash shirts, so uh-huh. it was very thin. You could kind of see through. Okay. And I think maybe my nipple. I have big nipples. Could you so smell it? Peppy Little nipple. peppy nippy. Well, I love gonna... the peppy nippy. The pe- I love the peppy nippy. Okay, it's about us. I haven't had lunch either, so I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Where's my M and M's? Okay. Oh yeah, go get them. <laughs> yeah. Can I? Yes. yes. Well, I'll go grab them because I, I only have this. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I, okay. While she making meatballs doing my dirty work for I me, I want to <laughs> ask you a drag race related question. Go for it. Because you brought it up. Yeah. I feel like, you know, we're currently watching an all star season happen. Yes. And they edit out a lot of the critique and judgment from the judges on an all star season. Well, thanks, Meeball. Because Thank it's you, just sort of like it's meant to be the celebration, right? Right. And the villains on All Stars are the other queens who are voting the girls off, yes. not the judges. Right. The judges are just giving you a second chance, right? Uh huh. <laughs> My question is on the first season that you go on. Okay. Like, did you feel empowered to not be defensive, but to respond back to critique? Like, did it feel like a conversation or did it feel like, oh, I just got to sit here and take it? Um, there is a time and place for you to react when you're up on the stage. So you receive the critiques and then if you have anything to add, it's all, it's after everyone goes and gives their critiques. All the way down the line. That's smart because I feel like it gives you a long enough time to really... Think about what Process you need to say it. instead of like just getting more and more heated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like the glue gun stopped working. Yeah. yeah. So it's like so fucking fall. Boiling over all at once. <laughs> There's only Fuck! one singer machine that works in there. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, yeah. Um I know that a lot of times I was just way too nervous to even kind of like You just be like thank you. Yeah, I was just very much shaking my head and being like, okay, am I gonna be in the bottom? Like just thinking the whole time, like, am I gonna actually be in the bottom? Right. Like that's what I was trying to get from the critiques. Um, not necessarily listening to the specifics of sure. the critiques, you know. You're trying to get to the meat. Listen, a lot was going on. A lot is yeah. always going on in my brain. So, that's uh, my question is, you're you're there for like six weeks or whatever filming. Mm-hmm. How much sleep do you actually f- get? Um, I did not get like any sleep. I may, oh, you guys. No matter what I'm doing, I get so nervous. I get I got nervous for this podcast. Oh, I get nervous for no. little bubble guts, baby. Bubble guts. So drink some mint, mint tea. Yeah. Oh, well, I might have to in that wicked cup. <laughs> 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 but um, I didn't sleep a lot. Like when I came back from Drag Race, my partner was like, "You've lost weight. You look exhausted." And I, it was just because I wanted to do a good job and make sure that I felt prepared for everything. Mm, you right. know, you don't want to go into a job feeling not unprepared. Um, and I very heavily was unprepared the whole time. Wait, so. really? <laughs> you couldn't tell? Well, not from what I was watching. Yeah, I mean, you made it so far in the season. You made such an impactful um, sort of lasting impression. You're a name <laughs> that people remember. You made great television. Mm-hmm. And you. your attitude post-show has been... Ah, that was a TV show. Like, yes. I'm not that girl you made me out to be. Totally. And you're friends with everyone still. So, like, yeah. people were like, oh, cool. She played that character on the show. My question is, like, you remember, but uh-huh. I want to bring up the the full drama of your trajectory, which was, okay. like, you technically went home first, right? Yeah. Oh, my God, you guys, I did. I did. I went home first. forgot about that. I know. Oh, I because it was the double premiere. It was the Pork Chop Lounge, right? It, it was. Wait, no. Well, it wasn't no, Pork Chop Lounge. No, it wasn't Lounge. Pork Chop Lounge. So oh, it was the season was before. 13. Yeah. And then my season, they, like, had an episode and sent Orion home first. Right. Uh-huh. And then they sent me home the second episode. From the group. And Orion says that she knew that she was going to come back. Like, she could just tell the energy. But I did you not know. thought it was the I had, deal. Yeah. I 100% thought I was going home. Like, I was upset. I was irritated. I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to tell Crystal and my family when I get back? You know? But, um, yeah, I went home first. And then once I came back, my whole strategy was to pretend it didn't happen. 
Slay. <laughs> Which did you very well. Yeah, it did great yeah. for you. And I remember they would like bring it up in the confessional booth when we go talk, and I just kind of wouldn't acknowledge that it happened. <laughs> like I was just like, what am I, what am I gonna do? Just sit here and be well, I was sitting there and bitching about it. But you know, no, what but I'm in a different way. You were bitching in a fun way. You yeah. were sitting there being like, Well, I went home first and you weren't defeated about it. Right. Whereas I felt like watching Orion, if I can remember correctly, it felt like it's once she girls. went home, mm -hmm. she kind of gave up on the competition. Well, and everybody, you know, everybody deals with it their own way or whatever. But I'm very much one of those people, just in everyday life, it's like if something does not go how I think it's gonna go in my head, like, well, you can't really fucking do anything about it. So you just gotta keep going. Rolling with the punches. You just gotta keep moving forward. Roll with Grab the punches. Grab your MMs and roll with the punch. Yeah, that's right, bitch tits. <laughs> Come on, bitch tits. <laughs> it is interesting. Um, you are a part of... Can, we're you, not hear, can you hear me crunching? That yeah, they're going to love mean, that. You, mm. Yeah, it's great. ASMR, baby. Yeah, yeah baby. She's eating an Eminem mm -hmm. peanut. We're, I promise we're not only... <laughs> out of a teddy bear cup. Talk about a peanut. <laughs> a peanut <laughs> Eminem. Peanut. Peanut. What if we just abbreviate it to peen Eminems? Peen. peen. Give me that good peen. Ooh, what flavor? Peen. Well, I want a pretzel even... and peen. Mm. Remember yeah. the take fives? Oh, I guess that was an M and M. That was like a Snicker with a pretzel in it. But it does still exist. Wait, I thought those memory. were just the peen, like the peanuts. It was just peanuts, like a caramel bar with peanuts on top. Uh, that's a payday. payday. Oh my god, uh, I, I like candy. I love too much. Do you, are you a candy person? I am Big a candy. candy. I am, and I'm not supposed to because yeah. diabetes. Diabetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But baby, I love it. I love chocolate. I love. What's your favorite candy bar? I love a Reese's. I know that sounds so basic. No. I love a Reese's, but I also, ooh, the the white chocolate with the Oreo crunchies in it. You know what I'm talking about? It's a Hershey's oh, bar. Oh, the Hershey's bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those, the cookies and cream bars. I could eat that just melted in the package, but I could scoop it out with a spoon. I love that shit. Now, okay, do you consider a Little Debbie's Cosmic Brownie uh, a candy bar, or is that a dessert? Talk about tasting that, like plastic. It tastes uh, like cardboard, and it's delicious. <laughs> I love it. Okay, the ones with the walnuts on it are really good, too. Oh, you're old. <laughs> I like it. Put a little sea salt on top. It's oh, really, that's, that's classy. Yeah, uh, well, you that's know, really like that's how we do it in Missouri. Going through the school lunch line <laughs> yeah. to get the, like, the, the I don't, I don't brownie think, with the walnuts. I wouldn't on say top. that's a candy bar. I would no. say that that is more of a delicacy <laughs> in the Midwest. Uh, Midwest what, what's your opinion on a zebra cake? Love a zebra cake. D dip them in milk and get them a little mushy, and then suck the milk out as you're eating it. Well, oh, God, now, no. That's no? Like a I don't like that texture. I don't like the, the texture on the outside of a zebra cake, that bouncy bite that Kind of spongy. Yeah, it's spongy, and then okay. it coats your mouth with like a weird film. That's like a dollar I feel like that's store. something you'd be interested in, Meatball. No, no, no. Not a, no. <laughs> no. I want dry mouth, no coating. Oh, no cocaine. No milk. <laughs> no milk. No water, no milk. She's also like a, a savory guy. Yeah, I don't like sweets at all. So really. you like um like a salty, like a pickle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, pickles all Love the time. Pickle. Love pickle. I should have made you my grandma's recipe. Okay, do you Your like... Your grandma does great pickles. What she about those... Um, do you guys have Paneras here? Or yeah, like yeah. St. Louis Bread Co. or whatever they're called. Yeah. Um, they Same make play? St. Louis Bread Co. Yeah, got bought by it Panera. started in Missouri. Yeah, right. in St. Louis. What else started in Missouri? Um, Walt Disney's from Missouri. Boo. <laughs> he, was, he was. That's why he's an asshole. It's because he's from Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cupid dolls. You remember the Cupid dolls? That's from Missouri. Yeah, and Precious oh. Moments. I have a little Cupid right here. Precious. Do you really? Moments. Yeah, right there. A yeah, yeah. Maybe. But the person that came out with those um, from Missouri. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, your herstory meatball. I don't know my herstory. <laughs> it was free. <laughs> Those is, are the best tattoos. Yeah. It's my is there kind like of a fancy? You're going through it over there. Well, no, because I drove to uh, to um, yeah. Springfield, Missouri, one of the times that I came Forget yes. just there to perform. Yeah. One time I flew to the airport. To, to, mm -hmm. Which is wild. Uh, very that interesting. That tiny little airport yes. in Springfield, Missouri. But Never one time been. I drove, I think I was coming from St. Louis. Okay. Did you fly into St. Louis? No, I drove from Chicago. I had like a string of Midwestern gigs and yes. I drove myself like in between all the gigs. I did like a Kansas City, I did a St. Louis, and I did Springfield. Um, Springfield. Yeah, yeah. And I stopped at this like very wild, maybe fancy grocery store something with a w maybe it was like a hardware store <laughs> well those are two very different are things are you talking about the wawa <laughs> no it oh. was fancier wally's yeah was it a was it also a Green? gas station yes it was wally's all those things. i think okay. it's a wally's but that okay. would have been like right outside of illinois going into missouri like closer to the st louis side oh yeah 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 I i've never know. been actually oh, I've, okay. I've only driven past it <laughs> well there we have it. <laughs> but you know what i do love what have you been to a quick trip Love no, what's trip. a quick trip? Quick trip is 
a ga- I love gas station food. Me too. I'm a Bucky's girl. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Bucky's. Yes. Yes. I have one of those on my backpack. A uh, keychain. Little, uh, little Bucky Bussy. A little Bussy a Bucky keychain. Bussy. A Bussy. <laughs> a Bucky Bussy a Bucky keychain. Bussy. We'll get to Bussy Queen later. Bussy. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yes, sure. Okay. Um, sorry, that <laughs> threw me off. That Why? threw me off. Because she stole your face chart? No. Oh, you said it. <laughs> not me. Not me. I'm kidding. People look yeah, alike. Yeah, no, no. Everyone looks the same. Oh, trust me. I've heard that. Um, <laughs> but... What we're talking about? Oh, Quick Trip. <laughs> quick Trip's just a really good gas station. They have the best hot dogs. If and you ever Quick s- is spelled K W O Q U I. No Q W. No, it's not. Really? It's just a U. Wait. I think you're thinking of K W I K Trip, which is a different place. Quick Trip. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you want a Quick Trip? <laughs> okay. Well, how do? Okay. The real question is, how do you guys feel about like um, gas station taquitos, gas station hot Gross, dogs? I won't touch them. I've had food poisoning from. Um, a 7-Eleven twice. Baby, but if you fall off the horse, you have to get right back on it and ride. Honey. I did, and then I got food poisoning again. Okay, well, then it, it's just luck. <laughs> bad luck. <laughs> yeah, that's real bad luck. <laughs> what are you looking up? I'm looking up Quick Trip. On how to spell Quick it? Trip. There are two. There's a Q-U-I-K. Okay, is that... Is and there's a K-W-I-K. Yeah. Okay, I'm talking about the Q- yeah! The Q-U-I. Y'all need to start listening to K. Meatball. She knows some sh- sometimes. Where's the anyway, what's it like being famous now? <laughs> Actually, um, let's take a break and then we'll answer We'll take that a quick question. KWIK break. <laughs> and we're back. And I do want to say I will consume hot dog taquitos and hot or, or gas station hot dogs and taquitos I just for the record. With the mustard with the little packets of mustard. Mm. I yeah, I used to steal the hamburgers from the 7's Elevens. You know how they would leave the prepackaged yes. hamburgers just under the heating the lamp? Heat- I would literally just be like, one, two, look out, three, four. Speaking of 7 Eleven, like you're until singing they... the song wrong. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, three four, four, five. Mm-mm. So young. Mm-mm. So young. So young. Uh, you guys are really showing your age. Yeah! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, what is it like being famous now? <laughs> Y'all, I've been having the best time since, um, you know, the season wrapped and the new season started. I <laughs> love watching other girls go through it. It's so fun. Does it feel so much different watching it, just knowing everything that's going on behind the scenes? Totally. Yeah, 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 definitely. And I, I, my heart goes out to, you know, all the girls that... All the big girls. <laughs> my heart goes out to the big girls. <laughs> Mistress. Um, no, but, you know, at the end of the day... We're here to support each other. We like to throw shade. I think people forget that we're drag queens and we're here to like yeah. be. It's fun to be to each other. And and then if it is taken too far, like we know our boundaries. I think a lot of the younger viewers don't understand that aspect of drag because they've never been in a fucking drag room. Yeah, and you they know? don't have the. They're young, so they don't have the yeah. maturity to be like, oh, let's just talk about it really quick. Yeah. So that's the that's the one thing I hate. Like Twitter is a hellscape. I hate going on Twitter. I hate it. Like social. <laughs> I used to love going on social media, but now it's like. I pop in when I have to, and then I dip out. You, you know? do your paid promotions, and you're yeah, done. and then I, I big dip out, honey. I mean, yes, you do your pharmaceutical company. I take connections, and then you're gone. You go to For Abbott sure, Industries, honey. and you let them know. Wow, you did your research, <laughs> Mama. <laughs> so, wh- what did you just do? Some huge event? It was like their yeah. what? Their you were sales selling drugs. Yet? So, um, Abbott is the company that makes a blood glucose monitoring system. The ones you'll see them on people's arms. They look like little dots, uh-huh. and it's a blue. Bluetooth device that connects to your smartphone and it tells you blood sh- your blood sugar so you don't have to prick your fingers. Oh, sick. so I they partnered with me at the beginning of this year and I went and spoke at their national um, sales meeting just kind of as like my testimony, my dra- my drag experience, my um, diabetes journey, yeah, and how it affects my drag experience. And um, I got to kind of learn a little bit about the industry. It was really interesting going into an industry that, you know, starts, your, your event starts at 9 a.m. And yeah. then it's over by 5. And then I'm like out of drag by 5.30. I, was I love like, it. Yeah. Loved it. It was like my favorite thing ever. And, you know, I got up there and spoke. And it was cool. It was different than what I'm used to. And I was really honored that they had me be a part of their team. And I have to do a few more things for them throughout the year. But, honey. That's I cool. It. Yeah, I mean, I'm very honored. That's like the thing I told my mom. I, that like the thing when I told my mom that I was doing. She was the most excited. She was so excited about it. She, you know, that was like where her face lit up. So I love that's that. Incredible. Gotta make mom happy. Yeah. yeah. Ha- has she been super supportive and happy with the drag career up until now, or was it no. a struggle at the oh. beginning? It was definitely a struggle. So like, um, I 
when I came out as gay, it was as I was already in Springfield. What? <laughs> I'm a queer. Oh, no. I'm a queer, honey. I thought you were one of the Matty Moore. Quick things. trip. Let's grab the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, like, when I came out as gay, it took her a while. Like, she she accepted it, but she was more she like... She was like, but you're so tall. Yeah, you're, you should be playing basketball, <laughs> honey. But I'm playing with other balls. But, um, yeah, I, I feel like right when she got super comfortable with me talking about my queer experiences as a gay man, and then she found out I was doing drag she didn't understand like what drag was. Mm -hmm. And so that was really hard. And there was like a solid like year and a half where she just like pretended I didn't do it. And like, that's how I was making a good source of my money before I even auditioned for drag race. So, um, yeah, but once I got on drag race, I told her, I was like, I want you to come to a brunch. Cause I feel like if you haven't been to a drag show in a club, especially a gay club, um, the best way for, people that are a little on the fence with it might be a brunch mm-hmm. because brunches are usually a little more tame. They are. It's not, it's not a fat slut event. It's not, no. There's food. Yeah, there is there's food. food. You can, you're seated and you're around a lot of other people and the lights are on. Exactly. <laughs> the lights are on, which is what I hate about brunch, but <laughs> she loves about brunch. <laughs> but um, she came to a brunch and I told her, I was like, I will be pissed if the first time you see me is when I'm on TV and drag. Like, I want mm. you to come to an event. Yeah. While I'm in drag, before it even airs, before it's announced, and she did, and um, ever since then. So you had already filmed, Mm -hmm. and then you came back and you were like, "Come see me live." Yes. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah, and it took her some time, but I also have to remember, like, being from Missouri in such a small area that people are just, you know, it's going to take them time, and not everything can be changed overnight. Viewpoint wise. Let's talk about Missouri a little bit. I'm like, how mm-hmm. did you do track in Missouri? <laughs> okay, well, Dip, um, whenever yeah. you came to Get Dusted, so Get Dusted was the first show that I started doing. There was a gay bar in Springfield called Martha's Vineyard. Uh-huh. Still called, called Martha's Vineyard, but um, it wasn't my home bar. My home bar was actually a place called the Outland Ballroom. It was like a little rock venue. Yeah. And then the lower level was like just kind of a divey pool bar, like okay. billiards, tables, just, you know. Um, and so we had an event, Get Dusted, once a month, and that's when I met Crystal. Crystal's rule before I was in the show was to be in the show, you have to come to a Get Dusted, say hello to her in drag, and then she will decide. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So she New rule for fat slut. But you know what? She let everybody in. She, like, she let everybody <laughs> yeah, I in. Yeah, anyone who asks it. <laughs> yeah. Unless but... you're bad. Yeah, and then then we would hire you people know. like um, other queer performers yeah. from all over. You Brooke Candy, Big Dipper was here. Uh, Brooke Candy. Who else did we have? We had Ron Jeremy. <gasps> we had Ron Jeremy Shut came up. and did, came and did a stand up uh, night, which he ended up and he ended up in our green room, being a woman. Um, so you know, very telling. They always make it happen. Very queer, Ron. Right. right. I will say at the last fat <laughs> slut we did at two a.m. find a man and two women in a in the private bathroom. Stunned. I was like, yes, yeah. I love it. I'm like, if I'm like, not, get I'll, the f- out. Yeah, if I'm not a part of it though, like right. I'm there. Yeah, I was like, I want to go home. I will say, I remember coming to do that party. It was so Hot. amazing to. Well, it was very warm. Yeah, you came during. I think it was Pride season. Yeah, I been. Yeah. I I did two of them. And it was so amazing to see not only, like, a queer community, but, like, an alternative queer community that was happening in a new and different space, in a music venue. Mm -hmm. People were driving in from, like, pretty far away. It was a big event. People would always, like, uh, get a hotel for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Like, and the cool thing that Crystal and you and Lux and mm-hmm. uh, Dagan. Dagan would have was just like beautiful Dagan. drag family. <laughs> yeah. Dagan Michelle. Yes, yes, Dagan yes. Dagan Michelle yes. will Dagan give you Michelle. every She's giving Nikki you the Nikki. Nikki. No. Uh-huh. My they favorite thing. podcast too now. Go listen. My favorite thing. she found TikTok, honey. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That is right up her alley. <laughs> but yeah, we, we always, um, those are like some of my favorite memories was like our little house getting to do that because like, you know, who gets these cool music, yeah. queer, big queer music artists um, to come in and do their thing in the little tiny dot of Springfield, Missouri. Like, it was so cool. And it was something that we would, um, we had a, a ma- it wasn't like a manager. We called him just dad. He was very fatherly to us. Mm-hmm. Um, his name's Johan. So shout out to Johan if you're listening. <laughs> but um, That dude is wild. Very caring. <laughs> oh, wild. oh yeah. Johan okay. has a story, honey. He's from New Orleans. He moved to, <laughs> to Missouri. He was a DJ for a he, Very crazy man. But I love him. He really helped me get my foot in the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was so fun. Do you, were you there? We didn't have, dr- okay, so the the upstairs at the Outland where you performed yeah. Big Dipper um, didn't have 
air conditioning. Yeah. And the, the listen to this meatball. You're going to shit your pants. No, there was like one box fan in the green room. And to use that box fan, it had to be plugged in. But the only plug-in in the room for hair dryers was that same plug-in. So if you wanted to blow dry your wig to like get it to stick to your forehead, you had to unplug the fan, the air conditioner. So no one unplugged it. No, we did. <laughs> so it was fucking hot. Well, yeah. These were vicious. these were like twenty two year olds who were like, "I'm oh drag yeah." No I mean, what. I remember. Yeah. Th- oh yeah. They were. They, it, it was really. It was a really. It's like a core memory for me for traveling and performing. And that's really cool. I will tell you that I recently was sorting through a hard drive and I found video footage from when the four of you all danced back up with, for me with in you? my set. Oh no. To what Dude, song? I need good to me. Oh, good attack. You have to send it to me. I'll find it. I'm gonna yeah. have to watch it. God I'll knows put what, it on the internet. I was saying, God knows what we looked like. But. You're probably <laughs> gorgeous. Probably gorgeous. Look gorgeous. I looked at old pictures of all y'all together. Lux it was had, gorgeous. you know, oh, her fucking good. heart painted on yeah, her nose. The classic Lux. You yes. were giving like mohawk or something of in neon course. green and sure. the tallest shoes in the room. Rip fishnets. Crystal looked like I don't know an anime character. And yeah. Dagan looked gorgeous. Dagan looked like Dagan, honey. <laughs> Dagan was always so, oh, so kind. My favorite thing um, about Dagan. Oh, sorry. No, you go, you go. There was um a show we did. And right before she went on stage, she stubbed her toe really bad going up the stairs yeah. um, to the stage. And then she comes off Very of the stage, girls. blood all over her <gasps> foot, shoe. Like it, it was just like sp- squirting blood. It was disgusting. But she did the damn thing on stage. It was sickening. That's a drag queen for you. Yeah, she'll don't give finish you the, the number. Too. She's like, you I know, gotta go make that ten dollars. A, a cell phone to the face and finish the number. I know, I saw that. <sighs> That is also, ridiculous. give it up for BB Rexa. She's yes. Like, hell, you never pay attention. She a big girl. I love BB Rexa. I think she's gorgeous, honey. I think she's absolutely gorgeous too. Yeah, and her music's so fun. Why are you talking about her weight and her body? <laughs> Just say she's a thick girl. I'm on her side. Come mm-hmm. to Fat Slut. <laughs> BB Rexa. BB Rexa. Come to Fat Come Slut. To fat we slut. are talking to you. This is right at, yeah, someone get that to her. What was the drag scene like before, I mean, y'all became superstars there? Was there just like your local dive bar shows? Or? Well, um, actually a lot more pageant, uh, pageant-centered mm. drag, which was really not up our alley. And so like, oh my God, this is such a, I don't know if I should be telling this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. This story. Exclusive. So these, um, <laughs> we are not known for having money in Springfield like we are very resourceful mm-hmm. all of us even the pageant girls like we borrow things from each other we steal things from each other you know uh-huh. it's very much that type of community well the pageant girls <laughs> the pageant girls <laughs> one you? night mm-hmm. that wig's too small no that wig's perfect for me <laughs> this one yeah steal it right off my head <laughs> steal it right now we'll do a switch you don't want to put it <laughs> so one I night. saw how long it took you to put the, the <laughs> lace down <laughs> it's hard yeah, it doesn't look like lace um but <laughs> Anyway, so wear something. <laughs> At I least have, it's, I brought an orange t-shirt. I'm tired today. of hearing Dipper talk about my appearance when I'm given five minutes to change in between <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> and she's already sweaty. I know. She's already sweaty. Sorry to interrupt your story, but you that's know what? what we Meatball, do I think you look gorgeous. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, Thank you. Big Dipper, how dare you? Eat a bag of d- Get in yeah. your frame. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But anyway, they would share everything. And one time I was down in the dressing room at the gay bar Martha's Vineyard. And we, me and Dagan, Michelle, overheard one of the pageant girls ask another pageant girl, hey, baby, you using the white contacts tonight? And grabbed her pair of white contacts and plopped them in her, like the other girl grabbed the the pair of contacts that were previously worn Mm -hmm. by this other drag queen and plopped them in her eyes. Isn't that crazy? That's how you get it. Parasite. Honey, but we love each other. Well, yeah, I mean, that's it. it. I mean, that was Young Drag. I mean, yeah. we were doing kind of the similar thing, but we were also telling each other, like, oh, yeah, totally. Just stack those contacts on top of each other. Oh, my God. That's a great way to get an eye Would infection. you do it with lashes, too? Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, me and Bitch have shared lashes, like, on the lash line. Just been like, oh, thanks, girl. Oh, just, like, from one eye yeah, to the other? Yeah, just being like, I left my lashes at home. She's like, when my number's done, you can have mine. Hey, g- fake it till you make it. You got to do what you got to do. Girl, it's disgusting out here. <laughs> but that's drag, you know? And I, I think that's uh, something that a lot of people forget, especially because it is so popularized and uh, mainstream right now, even though, you know, people are being it's very... It's different now. It is very different. And so, like, when I hear of crazy stories like that, I'm like, that resonates with me. Because yeah. that's what I was used to in Springfield, was that... 